It's fun to be inquisitive. Be nosy. Stick to your passion. Find out more for yourself. Quest is fun. Join me, 13 years old Tristan Pang, on a journey of inspiration. Welcome to Youth Voices. Good afternoon. Welcome to my program. This is your host, Tristan Pang, on Planet FM 104.6. Youth Voices. Good to have your company. I know some of you may be having exams, so here's something relaxing. A few stories and quotes. And also, in the second part of the show, I'll share with you something that I'm really passionate about. So here we go. Let's be inspired. A story of a blind girl from livingtreasure.org. There was a blind girl who hated herself just because she was blind. She hated everyone except her loving boyfriend. He was always there for her. She said that if she could only see the world, she would marry her boyfriend. One day, someone donated a pair of eyes to her, and then she could see everything, including her boyfriend. Her boyfriend asked her, Now that you can see the world, will you marry me? The girl was shocked when she saw that her boyfriend was blind too, and refused to marry him. Her boyfriend walked away in tears, and later wrote a letter to her saying, Just take care of my eyes, dear. This is truly a very touching story. Yes, you may think it is only a story, but come to think about it, do you think it sounds familiar? Yes, it's our relationship with our parents. When we were young, we need their help, but when we grow up, the situation changes. We no longer need them. We are stronger, we know more of the modern things than they do. The bright future is lying in front of us. How many times have we forgotten that what we are is actually from our parents? Just like the girl in the story, the girl just didn't care to find out why she could see and abandon her boyfriend. Our parents sacrificed a lot for our future. We should always remember that and be thankful to them. Let's quote. Socrates said, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. Plato said, wise men speak because there is something to say. Fools because they have to say something. He also said, The man who makes everything that leads to happiness depends upon himself and not upon other men has adopted the very best plan for living happily. This is the man of moderation, the man of manly character and of wisdom. Let's be inspired. The Triple Filter Test from the livingtreasure.org In ancient Greece, Socrates was reputed to hold knowledge in high esteem. One day, an acquaintance met the great philosopher and said, Do you know what I just heard about your friend? Hold on a minute, Socrates replied. Before you talk to me about my friend, it might be a good idea to take a moment and filter what you're going to say. That's why I call it the triple filter test. The first filter is truth. Have you made absolutely sure that what you're about to tell me is true? Well, no, the man said. Actually, I just heard about it and... All right, said Socrates, so you don't really know if it's true or not. Now let's try the second filter, the filter of goodness. Is what you're about to tell me about my friend something good? Um, no, on the contrary. So, Socrates continued, you want to tell me something bad about my friend, but you aren't certain of it's true. You may still pass a third test, though, because there's one more filter left, the filter of usefulness. Is what you want to tell me about my friend going to be useful to me? No, not really. Well, concluded Socrates, if what you want to tell me is neither true, nor good, nor even useful, why tell me at all? Let's quote. You never do anything in this world without courage. It is the greatest quality of the mind next to honour, by Aristotle. Aristotle also said, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. And he also said, good habits form that youth make all the difference. Let's be inspired. Laughter is the best medicine from chicken soup for the surviving cell. Many years ago, Norman Cousins was diagnosed as terminally ill. He was given six months to live. His chance for recovery was one in 500. He could see the worry, depression and anger in his life contributed to and perhaps helped cause his disease. He wondered, if illness can be caused by negativity, can wellness be created by positive 
he decided to make an experiment on himself. Laughter was one of the most positive activities he knew. He rented all the funny movies he could find. He read funny stories. He asked his friends to call him whenever they said, heard, or did something funny. His pain was so great he could not sleep. Laughing for ten minutes solid, he found relieving the pain for several hours so he could sleep. He fully recovered from his illness and lived another twenty happy, healthy, and productive years. His journey is detailed in his book, Anatomy of the An Illness. He credits visualization, the love of his family and friends, and laughter for his recovery. Some people think laughter is a waste of time. It is a luxury, something to indulge in only every so often. Nothing could be further from the truth. Laughter is essential to our equilibrium, to our well-being, to and to our aliveness. If we're not well, laughter helps us get well. If we are well, laughter helps us stay that way. Since Cousins' groundbreaking subjective work, scientific studies have shown that laughter has a curative effect on the body, the mind, and the emotions. So, if you like laughter, consider it sound medical advice to indulge in it as often as you can. If you don't like laughter, then take your medicine. Laugh anyway. Use whatever makes you laugh: movies, Monty Python, records, books, cartoons, jokes, and friends. Give yourself permission to laugh, long and loud and out loud, whenever anything strikes you as funny. The people around you may think you're strange, but sooner or later, they will join in, even if they don't know what you're laughing about. Some diseases may be contagious, but nothing is as contagious as the cure: laughter. Let's explore. I recently made a video which I uploaded to YouTube about something I'm really passionate about. It's called the string theory, or some people like to say the theory of everything. This is the audio to the video. Hope you like it. It all started with the world's greatest scientist, Albert Einstein. He discovered theories that not only changed people's thinking. But also the entire world. Two of his theories, the special and the general theory of relativity, led to the invention of the atomic bomb and the theory of black holes and the Big Bang. But he didn't stop there. He created a third theory, which he called the unified field theory. But unfortunately, he died in 1955 without completing it. And now physicists carry on with his work, continuing the quest for the unified theory. But why do physicists keep working on Einstein's third theory? Well, to understand this, we have to look at the two most successful theories in physics. The first theory, general relativity, which is the theory of the macrocosmic world, or in other words, the big world, the world of galaxies and black holes. It explains the behavior and nature of all things visible to the naked eye. The second theory, quantum theory, which is the theory of the microcosmic, describes very small things. It explains the nature and behavior of all things on an atomic and subatomic level. So, what's wrong with these two theories? Well, actually, there's nothing wrong with them if they work separately. They each work amazingly well by themselves in their own worlds, but when combined, they completely oppose each other. And physicists can't just keep on using them just as they are. It is because that there are some cases in which both theories apply, such as in a black hole. The size of a black hole is small in terms of length. But the size is large in terms of mass, so we need both theories. So, what is the solution? We need a theory of everything. Einstein started on this with his unified model, and now the modern scientists hope that one theory might be able to describe all of nature's forces from one set of ideas, one set of principles, and one master equation. It is the ultimate goal of physics. Scientists found the standard model after decades of hard work. It is highly successful in providing experimental predictions. Electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces have been explained by this model, but there's still a problem: gravity does not fit into the equation. And now, finally, the world's leading physicists think that they have found the theory of everything. The theory, which has made so much excitement, is called the string theory. To understand the string theory, let's take a quick look at the four forces which control everything in our universe. Which the string theory unites. So, before modern science, the ancient Greeks thought that the universe is made of four elements: air, water, earth, and fire. But today, we know that our universe is made up of atoms and subatomic particles, 
held together by only four forces. So the first force, gravity, is the force which keeps our feet on the ground and holds the solar system and the galaxies together. If there is no gravity, we will be thrown into outer space. The next force, electromagnetism, creates our electricity, among other things. Without this force, light bulbs will not work and we will be back into the stone ages. The third force, strong nuclear force, is the force which creates the sun. Without this force, the stars will black out and without the sun, everything will freeze. The last force, the weak nuclear force, is the force of radioactive decay. This force can be used for radioactive traces, used in nuclear medicine. Without this force, we won't have the advanced medical treatment as it is. Now, you may have figured out that the first force, gravity, is described by general relativity, while the other three forces, electromagnetism, strong nuclear and weak nuclear forces, are described by quantum theory. These forces are so important, but yet so contradictory. And now, string theory unites them. The smallest particles, we now think, have something else in them, dancing strands of energy that look like vibrating strings. These are just like strings on a guitar, which can vibrate in different ways. But instead of making notes, they make different particles around us. The size of these strings are about 10 to the negative 33 centimeters long, and that might be a bit hard to visualize. So now let's say if we made an atom the size of the solar system, a string will be about the size of a tree. String theory is the first theory of physics that tries to explain everything. It tries to explain how the universe began and where it is going. It also explains everything we feel, see, or measure. If this theory is true, everything and every force is the result of vibrations of strings. We know that we are living in the universe of space-time, that is, four dimensions, with a space with length, depth, height, and also time. Each dimension is orthogonal to one another. So now, for example, let's take this line, a one-dimensional shape. Now, let's make this line have a height. Now it becomes a square, a 2D shape. Now, let's add a depth to the square. It will become a cube, a 3D shape. But also, strings vibrate in more than the four-dimensional space-time. String theory allows for 11 dimensions, as well as multiple other universes. The other seven dimensions are tightly curled up. Physicists believe we may never be able to see these dimensions, unlike the four-dimension or space-time, because it might be that they are very, very small. Let's take a sheet of paper and roll it into a tube. As the radius of the tube gets smaller, the 2D sheet of paper begins to look like a 1D line. Having said that, it might also be that we are somehow confined to space-time, or it might be that the extra dimensions are not there. String theory can also explain why gravity is weaker than electromagnetism. Try holding an electromagnet above a piece of metal. The metal will fly upwards towards the electromagnet if it gets close enough, opposing gravity. Physicists think that gravity is caused by particles called gravitons. These gravitons are made up of close-ended strings, that is, strings that form a circle. Gravitons may not be restricted to our dimensions, but may be able to float into other dimensions, unlike other particles that are formed by open strings. These other particles are anchored to their dimensions. So, how do we test it? Physicists are using the Large Hadron Collider, the world's most powerful accelerator in Geneva, Switzerland, to collide particles together and to try to find evidence of these higher dimensions. One thing they are trying to detect are the gravitons. Physicists are trying to see if there is a gap in space, which may indicate a graviton floating into higher dimensions. And there you have it, a theory of everything that unifies forces, electrons and quarks, radiation particles, photons, gravitons, among other things. So matter and the forces are made of vibrating strings, but there are still many other things to do before the theory is complete. Perhaps you may be the one to complete this quest for the theory of everything. If you would like to watch the video, please go to my website www.questisfun.org.nz or go to my YouTube channel by searching Tristan Pang on YouTube. So that's it for today. Hope you can tune in next month on the first Wednesday, which is the 2nd of December at 2.10pm. Have a great day. Goodbye world. Join me again for another exciting program next month on the first Wednesday at 2.10pm. Or listen anytime online at planetaudio.org.nz slash youthvoices. Or listen to the archive on my website www.questisfun.org.nz slash youthvoices. Youth Voices, 